And welcome to today's Elaine A. Powers' Reptile Side Chat. Today we're going to be talking about autotomy. Now, I've been talking about iguanas all this month. April is Iguana Month. And you've seen the, the green iguanas with their really, really long tails. As a matter of fact, the tails are two-thirds of their body length. Uh, the torso is actually kind of short with a really, really long tail. Now, this tail has many purposes, um, you know, balance. They, they do climb. And it can also be used as a defensive mechanism. It, it whips really well. Um, I've experienced a few whips, and, and they hurt. Um, and along with their usual other defenses of fleeing, uh, jumping into a body of water and swimming away, uh, biting, uh, they have razor sharp teeth. Um, they do have one other escape mechanism. And this one is used as a last resort. Uh, as you recall, everybody likes to eat an iguana. You know, they're very tasty. If you're a carnivore of any kind, you're going to eat an iguana, including people. You know, we eat iguanas too. Um, and so, but then they have these really long tails that, that are stuck out there. So they may be fleeing, they may be running as fast as their little legs can catch, but the predator might grab hold of that tail. Now, that could be a problem if the tail stayed attached. But as we're going to discuss in, this, in today's topic, they have the ability to drop the tail, what's called dropping the tail, and that's autonomy or self-mutilation, um, uh, a self-cutting of their tail. Now, iguanas have a, a vertical fracture plane in their tail so that when something grabs on and they fear for their lives, they will actually clamp down with their muscles so hard that it snaps the tail off. It shuts down the blood supply so the iguana doesn't bleed to death. It cuts through the muscle tissue and so that the predator is left holding the tail. Now, a really creepy thing about this is that the tail wiggles. So that kind of distracts the predator as well. He's got this little piece of tail that's writhing and wiggling all on its own. Uh, meanwhile, the green iguana has escaped to live another day. Um, and so he, he's kind of happy he had the ability to drop his tail, but now he's missing a tail. So iguanas also have the ability to regenerate their tails. Now, unfortunately, the regenerated tail is not as pretty and as nice as the original tail. Um, instead of the bone that's found in a real tail, it's a cartilaginous fibrous materials so that um, it, it's there, it functions, it has a blood supply, but it's not the original tail. So you really don't want to be grabbing iguana's tails um, because, you know, it, it's, just, it's just not the right thing to do. And that way, you know, if you have a pet iguana or uh, you happen to be around an iguana, you never grab it by its tail, even though that's the most convenient part out there. Always grab it on the hips. You can grab it like this here. Uh, Calliope is uh, helping me out today, even though she's a little shy. Um, so if you grab it up here, uh, then they can't drop their tail. You know, you, you've got the legs. They're not going to drop their legs. Now, the interesting thing about the tail is that they will drop it wherever the predator is holding it. So if the predator just has the tip of the tail, they'll just drop the tip of the tail off. If it's farther up here, they'll drop it up here. So remember, never grab an iguana by the tail. But we're talking about regeneration. Now, Calliope is a very active climber. And one day, she stuck her tail in a spot that was too tight. And so when she went to move, the back half of the tail was stuck. She pulled, actually snapped the tail without 
dropping it at that point. Um, a little while later, she actually did manage to whack it off and um, had, a, had a nice clean break the tail. So if, I don't know if you can see that, there you go. Okay, so she's regenerating her tail, this new tissue. As you can see, it's, it's kind of brownish. Um, it's not the lovely green and striped that the original tail was. Um, and the problem is, is they don't always grow back straight. Um, I don't know if you can see, but hers has a little bend in it. Um, it's kind of doing a little spiral as it regenerates. So uh, sometimes they get it nice and straight and it looks good. And then sometimes one part of the wound is actually growing a little faster uh, than the other side. And um, so then they get hooks and they get um, twisting in the tail. But as you can see, it's not, it's not the pretty green stripes that it was. It's just this brown fibrous material. But that's okay. At least you'll have a tail back. So now I want to show you another one of my iguanas who, who dropped his tail. All right. Say goodbye, Calliope. Yes. See? Say hi to all your friends. Okay. I'm out of here. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Calliope. All right. So I have a, an older green iguana. His name is Ezra. And many, many years ago, he actually uh, injured, was injured. A dog bit him, and, um, and his tail was, was damaged. Now, unfortunately, iguanas, sometimes when their tails get injured, they, they just don't heal right. So it is in their best interest to drop their tails so that the, the tissue can heal. So um, he, he did regenerate his tail. But as you were seeing with Calliope, his didn't grow straight, and it actually formed into a hook at the end, a big U at the end of his tail. And so when he was walking around, he was always catching it on stuff, you know, chair legs, um, different things. And it got to be really, really annoying because he'd be cruising along, and suddenly he'd be pulled up short by his tail getting hooked on something. So one day, he just got so frustrated that he dropped his re the regenerated part of his tail. And he was of an age that he just decided not to regenerate. Uh, the wound healed, and he, he has this nice round stump that he's much happier with. Um, so they can actually have autotomy on a part of the tail that's already automatized before. I don't know if that's a word, automatized. Um, so he's, he's much happier without his tail. But at the, the site of this wound and the, the double dropping, the, the tissue is really quite fibrous and hard. So he has lost the flexibility of the tail. It, it doesn't bend like it used to. Now, one important thing, if you're a vet or you have to take your iguana in uh, be, to have its either, you know, it needs to drop its tail because it's been injured or it has dropped its tail and, and you want the vet to look at it is make sure they never stitch the end of the tail up. I had one iguana uh, who was attacked by dogs, by a pack of dogs, and her tail was chewed up, so the vet had to amputate her tail. And he stitched up the end. In the effort to regenerate, the tail actually forced its way through the stitch in the middle, but the rest of the stitches wouldn't come out. So she was left with this little teeny tiny regenerated tail um, that was like a straw coming out from the base of her tail. And the, the vet realized he made a mistake. Uh, unfortunately, it was too late at that time, but um, she eventually did whack off her really worthless little regenerated tail. So never grab an iguana by the tail. I actually never grab any lizard by the tail. Many of them do have the ability of autotomy. And um, always make sure you properly support your iguanas. This is Ezra. Say hi, Ezra. <laughs> uh, and we should be amazed that these incredible reptiles, these vertebrates, can actually regenerate a tail that they have dropped. So today, We've learned about autonomy.
don't drop those tails and don't grab those tails. Uh, do go to my website, elaineapowers.com, and sign up for my newsletter where I'll reveal breaking news uh, in the reptile side chat world. And uh, check out my books and workbooks at lyricpower.net. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll see you next week on the next Elaine A. Powers Reptile Side Chat. Bye.